Okay, welcome. Um, this lecture is going to talk about um, social work ethics and technology. I would like you to get out for your readings this week. You need to look at um, NASW and ASWB standards for technology and social work practice and kind of have that available on um, and having read that before you get into the lecture and then certainly have that available. So we're going to start off with kind of thinking about um, ethical considerations as it, as it goes to technology. So we know that electronic tools in social work um, have kind of grown and we need to kind of keep pace with these developments. So what I'd like us to do is to first start thinking about, um, I guess first we'll go to, through the standards of social work practice and um, ethical standards, and then we'll go look at the NASW and ASWB kind of standards. So um, this actually is from Lewis, the kind of concerned about how social workers will navigate new technologies um, without compromising our ethical standards. Um, and so this is kind of something that, you know, I think continues to evolve as more technologies kind of evolve. Um, so let's get started with um, some of the going through. Um, let me start with um, Maryland. I'm licensed a social worker in Maryland. So because of that, I have um, the code of ethics kind of as through the Maryland Board of Social Work Examiners. So here is some ethical um, pieces that I pulled out of um, the ethics this way, um, the code of ethics that um, discuss technology. So that's kind of one code of ethics we're going to talk about today. The other code is from NASW, the National Association of Social Workers um, has a code of ethics that guides the practice. But again, that's not what I'm liable to because I'm licensed in the state of Maryland. And so it's, it's the Maryland Board of Social Work Examiners that kind of um, has a code of ethics that I am kind of have to f abide by. So we'll kind of think about um, some of the things that have um, noted technology in these two codes of ethics. So um, let's think about responsibilities to clients it's listed under the code of ethics and um, ensures that no confidential information is going to be kind of passed out and the identities are going to be protected when using the computer and internet technologies. Um, again, you can see how really broad this is. So the idea of this is, is we're not really sure um, kind of what those tools would look like. Um, you know, 20 years or 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when I was getting finishing and when I was in my field placements, the way we referred clients was through fax machine. Well, now you could potentially refer clients through um, sending documents through email or sending them through um, maybe there's they have a site on their website to actually kind of send information and attach documents and referrals and whatnot. So, kind of, this is how they're trying to keep it very general to kind of note that. Another place in the code of ethics um, that it kind of notes responsibilities to clients that I can't kind of um, solicit information um, either in person or via phone um, or through social media. And that's kind of a very general term, but a way that you can think about through technology. Um, The next code where technology is kind of mentioned is that I cannot, um, as, a, as a practicing licensed social worker, um, enter into a dual relationship with, my, with a client or an individual who my client is close to, say my client's brother, and be dating that person. So, um, you know, we talk about close relationship, but when you think about relationships that you have that are close, are they all kind of personal and in-person? Or do you have some personal relationships that you have either developed or maintained kind of in the online world, maybe through Facebook, maybe a friend of a friend of yours, you, um, you know, have something in common with your both social workers, you both work in child welfare, and so you've connected with this person even though you don't know who they are, you've connected with them maybe on your, through your friend through Facebook. So what does that mean if that happens to be a client or a client's relative? Um, so, again, kind of thinking about how we can apply this to the technology piece. So those are a few pieces that are kind of pulled from the Maryland Board of Social Work Examiners. Now we're going to look at kind of the National Association of Social Workers Code of Ethics. And social workers who provide um, services through electronic media, and they kind of 
specify those as computer, telephone, radio, television. Um, you need to inform the, the client of the limitations and the risks kind of associated with that. And this idea of kind of informed consent. Um, so that's something to kind of think about. And we as social workers need to be thinking about that too in um, terms of our practicing um, confidently and within our jurisdictions. Are we providing services kind of beyond um, our jurisdiction? So I am, again, licensed in Maryland. I'm able to serve individuals living and kind of residing in Maryland. What does that look like if I'm providing services to a client who is in California and I'm doing that kind of through the internet? Um, so that's something for us to kind of be thinking about. Um, some social workers need to take precautions to ensure we are maintaining our confidentiality um, and maintaining um, appropriate records that way. And this is kind of something we saw in the, code of, uh, in the Maryland Code of Ethics, too. So kind of how we're protecting information that has our clients' confidential information, not even just name, address, um, social security, and that information, but also um, perhaps diagnosis and treatment and things like that. Um, we need to um, conduct, um, um, our, should keep our kind of private life, this is kind of private conduct, so we need to keep our kind of private life private and kind of separated from our professional life. And I think, you know, perhaps before technology we could argue that that was maybe a little bit more easy to do if I look back on kind of um, being in college, we took lots of photos, we had lots of photo albums, but those were all photo albums that were only shared with individuals within kind of my group of friends or people that I lived with. Um, what does that look like now? I mean, nowadays people post pictures and post stories and these situations kind of in Facebook and online, and so um, the world can kind of see that. And so how is it that we might need to think about this um, in relation to technology? and how you're going to kind of keep your personal life and your professional life separate. Does that mean that you don't actually let your um, coworkers onto your Facebook account? Does that mean that you don't put your personal, you know, pictures up on Facebook because then your coworkers can see that? You know, how do you kind of keep those two worlds a little bit separated um, that way? And, um, Social workers should not kind of engage in solicitation um, from current clients or from others, um, and certainly those that are vulnerable um, and who see us in kind of a position of authority. That way. Um, and this is something that I kind of started thinking about, you know, how could we um, actually push different topics or issues um, that maybe we wouldn't be able to do kind of, it wouldn't do face to face, but you know, online, you know, there's now so many products that ask you to join their Facebook accounts and ask you to like them so that you can almost sell them. And even like my seven year old kid knows that if an item has five stars, it must be really good and people must like it and you should have it too. Um, you know, when he's looking to get a new um, app or get a new um, uh, something on Amazon. So it's like we're already trained like He's seven, he's already trained. He's already well trained to do that. So our clients, who could be kind of vulnerable and, and not knowing a lot of information, may be influenced to make certain decisions or do certain things based on something that I like or something that I, you know, kind of note on Facebook is something that I think that they should do or something that they should like. And that's something that can be powerful in terms of how you can kind of move something that way or make a movement of something. So be cautious of how we're maybe using technology to solicit things. Um, so the next part is, and I'm wanting you to think about, so basically what happened is NESW and the Association of Social Work Boards, ASWB, kind of got together and said, okay, there's more and more technology out there. We have code of ethics, but maybe we should come up with like a code of ethics um, in terms of social work practice. And so if you kind of which you are required to read, the ASWB and the ASWB kind of thing, but they kind of talk about how um, they want to, these standards to apply to the use of technology um, and as well as practice and kind of this bigger picture. They know that technology is existing and there's going to be these ethical issues and so 
they wanted to kind of start these standards of practice. And that's how this kind of document evolved. And it was published in 2005. Um, so many, this is a good quote from them, many technologies are powerful but fragile, crucial information can be lost and intercepted, not all websites providing information are reliable, which we've already talked about, service providers can easily misrepresent themselves and their credentials online, can be very dangerous, confidentiality can quickly evaporate, jurisdiction, liability, malpractice can blur between state lines, if I'm again providing a social worker providing services to clients out in California, this idea of digital divides. Um, so, you know, I am working in an agency, a university that provides me with a desktop computer. So I have a computer in my office. Now, do all agencies are doing that? We are hopeful. Um, do all clients have access to, um, you know, a computer? Well, if my client is a homeless individual, they probably do not be able to go home and kind of look something up on their computer that I might give them as a resource. So that's something to, to be thinking about, that, that even if our, 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 um, our um, clients do have a home, you know, we know how expensive kind of the internet and the cable is, and is that something we even have access to? And so what does that look like? Um, and certainly clients and social workers have to have, um, they may have unrealistic expectations for what actually technology can provide. So, if you review kind of the standards for practice, they talk about, they highlight, and I'm going to highlight just a couple of those, that we are need to act ethically. We need to be practicing competently. We need to only be practicing within our field. We need to protect our clients and uphold the values of the profession. So that's kind of a general thing. We need to access to technology and use it. We need to know how to use it. And we need to ensure that our clients can access it. So perhaps the homeless shelter that I work at, I actually um, help get some money and funding so that we can have a computer center so that our clients can come in and, you know, most jobs are all online now. We need to submit into it really online. So maybe it's um, having a computer center at the homeless shelter that um, clients can actually go in and do their resume and, and apply online for materials or um, jobs or whatnot. So again, allowing clients to access that material. Um, that we want to be working, considering, continue to maintain kind of that cultural competence and develop skills to work with um, our vulnerable clients and being respectful that not all of our clients are going to know the programs or know the technology or know, um, you know, if, if you think about kind of um, this idea that any client that comes into our, into our office, you know, we may assume that they can, they can read um, and our clients may be able to read, but they may not be able to, and I put kind of air quotes, read technology that way. They may have never used a computer before. So kind of being aware and being um, kind of cognizant of that and, and, and considering that when working with our clients. We need to become proficient with our technological skills and support clients with that too. We need to recognize kind of the reg regulation on um, kind of in jurisdiction here. Um, again, I'm providing the service. I'm a licensed professional in, in Maryland. I need to know what those regulations are in terms of providing services. I need to know what my code ethics are and what I'm liable to. And if I am providing services kind of out of state, what does that state require? And what does that look like? Um, and, and letting the client know kind of where I'm licensed and what I'm able to do and what are the limits of, of my practice that way. Um, Certainly, um, identification um, and verification. So we need to represent ourselves accurately. You know, anybody can post a website, and they can make it look really good. So I need to, to if we, if I'm posting information about me and my agency, that that information is accurate. I'm not. I'm being truthful. I am noting that I'm a licensed, you know, clinical social worker, and that is really the truth. I'm not kind of making that up. Um, and. Unfortunately, I think that's where some things can be scary for some clients that, that aren't well versed in kind of finding a social worker, how they're kind of finding someone who maybe isn't as skilled or qualified and perhaps isn't um, representing themselves um, well on, on the, through the internet. We still do need to think about kind of privacy, confidentiality, and documents, documentation and security and the risks of that. Um, so many of us are using kind of wireless um, technology, either through our phone or other devices, tablets or iPads, and so how is that information being um, passed along and what does that look like? Um, and I think you guys need to be aware when you get out to your agencies, what are the tools that agencies provide? You know, 
needs to implement in our um, kind of computers and it was a very DOS-based kind of no windows um, is where the entry can make, but that was kind of a way to keep it secure within just the agency. So you should be aware if you're doing electronic notes at your agencies, what does that look like? What are you kind of required to do? How, how secure is the server and the material? Where does that go? Um, you know, you know, certainly if you have a laptop and then you pack that up and bring that home, I hope that's not on there. Um, because you're basically bringing all your client records home. And when you're accessing things kind of wirelessly on your phone, um, is it through Wi-Fi? Is it through kind of a, more of a secure network, a secure Wi-Fi? Maybe you're accessing your email and you have an email from a client. What does that look like? And so kind of really being aware of all the risks that we have um, that way. And really, we're doing that because we want to provide the best service and the highest quality to our clients. Um, and that's something that we need to be kind of thinking about when we're out there. And you're probably going to have to think about more things than I ever did as, as, as technology continues to evolve. And, um, you know, we didn't really have to worry about, you know, when I was in the field, um, cell phones were just emerging. Um, and we definitely didn't have cell phones that had kind of email on them and all the that we're calling them nowadays, but kind of the high-tech cell phones that have, you know, access to web pages and access to emails. So I, we didn't have that, so I wouldn't know until I got back to the office if I got an email. Um, and most of my clients weren't emailing me, they were calling or coming in face-to-face. So um, some of the things to kind of be thinking about. Um, practice competencies. Then it goes into kind of some of the practice competencies when we think about these different avenues, and if you think about some of the roles that we'll be playing as advocates, as community organizers, as administrators, thinking about how technology plays a role in that. We certainly see technology as really being an excellent way to advocate on behalf of something more so now than ever before. I mean, you know, if, when you think about what a petition was 15 years ago, you had to go door to door in order to get people to sign a petition. Well, I don't know how many of you guys get these petitions through your email now, but you can sign a petition on a website or through an email. So um, there's so much more that you can kind of do to activate um, a, a, a group, so to speak. And Facebook has been infamous for kind of doing that, kind of getting a cause and getting thousands of people from around the world behind that cause. Um, and so we see the benefits of technology, I think that's what I want to point out. Um, certainly in terms of the community practice that we are kind of noting how can we improve, um, adopt technology and improve the community service. You know, maybe you live in a very rural area that doesn't have a social worker within, you know, a hundred miles. So maybe you develop a satellite site that um, you can actually kind of create and clients can go to that site and you could be a hundred miles away and be providing, you know, be a facilitator for a group that's running there. Um, or be an administrator in terms of the services that they're providing. Or maybe you're providing supervision to a social worker that's on staff there that isn't kind of at the clinical level. So there's a lot that we can think about doing in terms of the advancement of technology. Um, certainly, administratively, we need to be aware of kind of all the technology and certainly maintaining and being knowledgeable about all of our systems. Um, in terms of direct practice, the clinical work, ways technology can be con kind of conducted and maintained, and some of the drawbacks um, and advantages from face-to-face -to, -face to online. I had a couple students that have really noted that, you know, some clients may actually feel like more comfortable kind of in online um, work rather than, maybe because of anxiety, um, rather than um, being in, you know, face-to-face -face kind of group. Um, and so that's kind of some of the things about. Think about some of the advantages, but also some of the disadvantages. We know as a profession, so much of our work is, um, is happens kind of face-to-face -face because that's how you pick up on body language. That's how you pick up on, um, on the different cues that maybe you wouldn't see or hear verbally. Um, sorry. Um, technologically, what, where do you go? Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay. I'm almost there. Okay, so research, we know research has been tremendously helpful in terms of being able to obtain research articles. I won't tell you that I used to have to walk uphill both ways to the library through the snow 
And that was the only way I could get a, a journal article. But part of that is true. Um, you know, we used to photocopy them at the library. Now you guys have access to a ton of electronic resources in terms of articles and whatnot. You can actually gather those, distribute those, and apply that research and just think about doing that and kind of like an article in the article way. And supervision, you know, same thing is what we're kind of talking about in direct practice, how much that's kind of opened up and what you can do. Um, but applying those same standards as you would in the face-to-face -face world. So that's kind of a little bit about kind of the ethics and technology. I want you guys to be aware of, again, the, how many different codes of ethics we have. So we have the Code of Ethics through NASW, National Association of Social Workers. We have, each state has its own Code of Ethics, which if you're licensed in that state, you're kind of abiding to follow that. And then again, this kind of new word, um, NASW, ASWB Code of Ethics. Now, a future assignment you're going to be working on is really going to be focused on this idea of ethics and technology. So I want you to really process this lecture, process the readings, and be thinking about that because your um, PowerPoint um, presentations are going to really be looking about at ethics and technology. And we'll talk in more detail about that assignment, but that's something you really reflect on in these readings and lectures to kind of apply that. Thank you so much and have a good day.